I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. After cutting off the side of the hall, we were finally at the point where it was time to start reassembling things. After some cleaning up, of course. Then the next step was to rebuild the ribs that had been cut out along with the hall plate. So what I'm doing here is I'm making the ribs and they've got a slight bend to them. So I've made a template um, by spiling or, or however you call it, like it's a method used to trace in a regular shape. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but the basic of it is um, you get a bunch of objects with points on them and you trace, you get your main uh, piece and then you glue these on or nail them or whatever, tack them on so that the points stick into whatever shape it is. In this case, uh, wrong way, it goes like this and it gives you the rounded shape of the hole or whatever shape you're looking for. So I did that. I traced that onto another uh, piece and cut it out. Like I cut out this curve here. It's not much of a curve, uh, but I think you can just see it there. So I cut that out on a bandsaw and then you can kind of see here that if this weld wasn't in the way, you can see it fits in there versus if it was straight, you see there's that gap there. So then I took my piece of steel, cut it to length. I've notched it because it's really hard to bend this stuff. Uh, it's 3 16 thick. Not sure what that is in metric. It's like 5 mil or something like that, 4 and a bit. Um, so. I've notched it at the points where it needs to bend and then hit it with a hammer to kind of give it the shape and you see it fits nice. It's a little gap there. But that gap was actually an irregularity in the hole so like you can see where this gap is here. The fairing compound is thinner and then it thickens out as you go along. So if I if the hole fits nice and snug along this rib, it'll actually reduce the amount of fairing compound I need. Which is not very much. Uh yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I just need to cut the ends. To their shape now and then weld those notches closed weld these closed and then it'll be as strong as it was before and that is the easiest way I've found of bending these because uh, I'm just working with what I have and I'm not looking at spending a huge amount of time and effort on this um they are very small plates and they are there's not very much bend to them but it is it comes up kind of straight and then has a bend in it so it's not a perfect curve either so this is just the best method i've found for doing it 
So I've got this one and this one, and they both fit pretty well. So they're just about ready to to um, weld them up and then cut the ends back to the proper shape. And I'll have to fit them in there with some straight edges and make sure that it's all going to be nice when I fit the plate. So today is kind of an interesting day. We're gonna try to actually get the first set of ribs back in the boat as well as the hull plate. So we've got, we set up some scaffolding so we can stand on that to hopefully weld easier. And we're getting the welder rigged up so that we can lift it with the crane to get it on the scaffolding so it'll actually reach into the boat. That's like our biggest struggle a lot of the time is actually getting the welder or the plasma cutter to be able to reach into the places in the boat that we need to weld or plasma cut, so that's what we're doing. Due to space considerations, we decided to build a second platform just for the welder, and this ended up working out extremely well. looks like where it's gonna sit. That's exciting. in there so what's next step we have to get the plate up here and somehow kind of stick it in place even though it doesn't have a bend on it and trace it out for the final uh, trimming on it. it needs to be trimmed down and cut it oversized by an inch all the way around nice uh, because I had to grind and retrim this so Yeah. Cool, cool. So before the ribs went in, Logan loaded one of our steel plates onto the forks of a forklift. From here, he used the plasma cutter to cut out a new hull plate, which he cut just slightly larger than the plate he had cut out of the boat. my first long cut on this plasma and it did really good. It took a minute to kind of figure out the speed and everything and one of the corners was a little bit janky but then once I got into it 
Like, look at how... That's the janky corner. <laughs> that was my fault. But look at how smooth and nice that is. Like, I won't have to grind that hardly at all. Well, it's on the plate. But look at how nice that is. Not gonna have to grind that hardly at all. Anyway, let's get this other piece fit. sitting there. Oh, it doesn't matter. You got the ribs in. After tacking the plate into place, Logan went inside the boat and traced the actual size of the plate so he could create a more exact fit. And then cut the plate back off again to go make those adjustments. So he welded a small plate for the bigger plate to rest on. here. 
could even chant for this, tack it, and then use the dogs to pull it in and run a zip disc along between these two. You have that kind of dexterity for doing that with a zip disc? I definitely do not. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't really matter which side it cuts. And it what it's a one mil zip disc, so I see what you mean. We got that piece pretty much fitted, and the trailer for Logan's parents' work, their construction company, the handle broke off of it for opening the back door, so Logan is trying to fix that right now while I'm going to sandblast this piece of hull plate so that it's ready to be tacked into the boat as soon as we have time for that. So, it's here, I'm going to throw it into the sandblaster. And this is the biggest piece that we've had in there so far, so hopefully it's not too big. Hopefully it works out. Um, it should be fine. It's just, it's a big heavy piece. So we'll see how that goes. It luckily fit in there fine, although I did have to do quite a bit of awkward maneuvering to get the whole thing blasted. Take a train ride just to see Well, that's one side done, and that took, I don't know, half an hour. I had to move it around a lot because the hose isn't long enough and my arms aren't long enough to hit all of it, and the distance from the nozzle to where the sand actually takes that scale off is pretty, pretty short, so you have to get the nozzle pretty close. And it's also like the nozzle only clears about that much at a time. So, not a quick process, but one side's done, so now I just gotta flip it and go through the same struggle on the other side. I also made a dog and wedge so that we could more easily line up our plate with the hull and we used it a lot for this job. So it looks pretty good. Um, just gonna have a look and see. It looks pretty fair. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, I just have to shine the light off of it a few different angles and see uh, how nice it is and have a look and, and see if, where it's hit on the ribs. I had to pull it in a little bit, uh, not a ton, so hopefully it uh, still matches the, the curve on the other side. We'll find out. Thanks so much for being here with us on this journey, and we hope to see you next week.